Hi, it's Craig. I'm on my R2 channel explaining uh, droid operation. Um, on this video, I am talking about the, the basics of what we call 232, and that is a droid that goes from two-legged mode to three-legged mode and back again. And uh, I've had my droids out at a lot of conventions, outings, and so on, and I've had a lot of people come up to me and ask me, a bunch of really good questions and a handful of people have asked me in fact one time it was like a 12 13 year old kid who asked me that how does the foot stay level and rigid in two-legged mode and how does the foot angle in three-legged mode so when he asked this question I was blown away to come uh, from someone so young this kid thought like an engineer and I almost wished that I had this plywood mock-up that I made, this one-third scale mock-up to explain it to him. But I think I did a pretty good job uh, of explaining it. I, I said to him, I said, well, if you were to go up to a go-kart and grab one of the two front wheels with your hands and force that wheel to turn right, what would happen to the other front wheel? And he'd say, well, that would turn right as well. And I said, exactly, because of the tie rod end that connect the two. And he said, exactly. So the kid understood. So that's when I explained to him, well, think of the leg as the go-kart. And think of the foot as one of the front wheels. And think of the body as the other front wheel. So if you have a mechanism inside this body that forces this leg back, thusly making the leg to body go to an angle, this tie rod in the leg going down to the foot is going to make the foot go at an angle. Um, and that's pretty much how it works. But I said, well, then, but the, the problem is the leg to body angle is different from the leg to foot angle. So the distance between the pivot point and the tie rod end at the foot has to be about twice the distance of the pivot point to the tie rod end at the top. And at my first droid, I had um, a big problem with this because the axle in the shoulders that connects one leg to the other that went through the body was a three quarter inch pipe. So you take that pipe and the outside diameter and then you talk about where you can safely uh, mount a good beefy mounting point. We were talking about one and a half inches between the central pivot point out. Well, one and a half inches up here had to translate to about three inches down here. And that was a big problem. So I was out one and a half. The tie rod started right here. And it came down, and to get to that three inches, I had to have the leg rod angle back to attach way out here. So the, the, the tie rod in the leg was not straight. It had an angle to it. Well, that was a weak point, and that was a dismal failure. So when I redid my droid um, years and years later, what I had done was I had, instead of going straight back from here, I went way up here. Um, now I'm in a territory where I can make um, a nice beefy connection and I can actually make uh, lots of different connections to fine tune it. So, um, and then that being that that's up here, that means that I can just do a straight run down to a mounting point down here. So I made four holes in the body that were so close together, they're actually touching each other. It's like a, it's like two figure eights. And then my leg rod, uh, the tie rod at the bottom is a stationary tie rod end, and the tie rod end at the top is adjustable. Uh, it threads in and out, so you can fine-tune the length of the leg rod. You can fine-tune the distance up here at the body. So when it comes to getting it assembled and um, getting it working, you can fine-tune the system. And when it comes to building anything, try to make it tunable um, from mounting points up here um, to limit switches. When I put limit switches in, I don't just drill holes and mount them. I will actually mount them on slotted holes so they can be fine-tuned. So now when the body forces the leg back and you get this body-to-leg angle, the leg-to-foot angle is done as well. And like I said, if it's not quite right, it can be fine-tuned up here not only in distance from the pivot point, 
but length of the leg rod. So um, I hope that made it simple to understand that aspect of it. We have a lot of builders who are coming up with some sort of complicated independent motors that linkage through the legs so these angles can be controlled independently, which to me I think is extra weight, it's over engineering, it is over complicating, it's causing a more complex failure point. So as long as your body to leg is transitioning, a simple rod doing the leg to foot transitioning is uh, more than enough in my opinion. So now that you've got that understood, um, leg rod to transition that, we can move ahead on future videos to get into the meat and potatoes of motors controlling um, in the body, forcing the side legs to go back. And we will get to that on some future videos and we will talk to you later.